I am Hallie Caster Jane, and welcome to the Hallie Caster Jane Show, where along with my partner in politics, veteran White House correspondent in time, and Newsweek alum Matthew Cooper, we slice and dice all things politics, and some days are lawmakers too. On this episode of the Hallie Caster Jane Show with Matthew Cooper, it's the Trump cult, and it's bad boys, Matt Gates, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, Tucker Carlson, oh yeah, and Donald Trump. And that's just where we begin. In our second half hour, we pull it all together when I am joined by Dr. Stephen Hassan, the author of the eye-opening book, The Cult of Trump, in which Dr. Hassan expertly takes us through a fascinating, engaging exploration of the coercive control technique Donald Trump used daily as president and continues to deploy in his post-presidency. But we begin with me and Matt. Here we go. Good morning, Matthew. Good morning, Hallie. I'm sighing, Matt, and we haven't even started. So <laughs> let You're me not just completely happy with everything. No, I think we're living in very, very, very sick times, not just because of COVID. Let me give you some statistics as we do on COVID to start with. Uh, as of this morning, we're near an, uh, let's see, 550,000. 557,000 COVID cases, COVID deaths in the United States, 31 million confirmed cases. The good news is distribution is going very, very well. More than 147 million doses have been administered. 53.5 million people or 16.1% of the total U.S. population. But cases are on the rise. That's not so good in 27 states, and governors and mayors uh, are bowing to political pressure prematurely, reopening their states uh, and ignoring Biden's uh, clear attempt to say, rein it back, you guys. We need to put these mask mandates back in uh, effect. And there's some small talk, I don't know if you've picked up on it, Matt, that they're thinking about a way to declare a national mandate within the confines of the law? Have you seen that? Uh, I have not. Yeah, uh, obscure story yesterday. Keep your eye on it. I have a feeling he is going to try and do that because all this work is for naught if people don't start you know, behaving properly. It's a fourth wave. You're seeing what's happening in Europe. We're always about three to six weeks behind Europe. So that's scary, right? Very. Yeah. How are you feeling since you're shot? Uh, good. Good. Yeah. Um, I'm a little tired after I got it, but I'm I'm good. Well, good. Looking forward to the second. <laughs> That's the fun one. The one story that is kind of percolating out there, I did want to just make mention of it. Peter Navarro, who was his go-to guy on this right. within the administration, uh, released new documents. Uh, House investigators released new documents showing that Navarro warned Trump to acquire medical supplies before the outbreak exploded in 2020. And after being ignored, pursuing his own, quote unquote, haphazard strategy to commit one point billion in federal funds, Navarro went to town. Yeah, so he was talking about your favorite news station. He was or or not news. Uh, he was on uh, Fox yesterday trying to say what a wonderful guy he was. <laughs> right. Single handed. So here's the deal. You know, um, one thing that's bothering me about not just the, in, in terms of COVID, but in terms in general you know, the Biden administration is not doing a whole lot, Matt, to go back and look to hold some people accountable who probably should be held accountable. CNN did a better job of that with their special on um, the doctors and, and uh, the cases uh, this week. Um, Dr. Burks trying to yeah, reinvent herself. I, they're not really doing that much. You know, they're, they could do a special commission where the president appoints all the members. They could try one with Congress, but then Republicans on the committee. And frankly, I don't know if they could have seen Republicans on the panel for it to work. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there are a couple of professional investigations, but not not a lot to the enormity of what we've been through. Uh, it's cur- Why do you think that is? It seems out of character. It's, yeah, well, maybe it's a little like Obama torture, that they didn't want to go back and prosecute or even really investigate that amount of torture that was used during the uh, Bush administration. And maybe he's just all about looking forward and back. Um, I think it's a mistake. I don't know. Because I think I, I, in this crazy climate, uh, political climate we're living in, um, I think it has to. everything has to be perfectly clear to those centrist voters who they're going to need in two years 
in so many states to keep the house, et cetera. So, um, you know, uh, he, he, this is not a host. This, this, this is the, he, Biden is really not a hostile guy. Is he, he's pretty extraordinary. Yeah. I mean, you don't really seem to stick the knife in. Yeah. Right. Like when was the last time we had a president like that? Eisenhower? <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. Jerry Ford, I don't know. Well, um, I, I never considered him a president. But <laughs> whatever. Unelected. Yeah, um, unelected. Fuel for thought. The good news here also is Pfizer this morning announced that the vaccine is 100% effective in children 12 to 15. That's pretty uh, pretty good news. Yeah, fantastic. Th- that gets you back to normal in a hurry by September with these kids getting back to school. So, um, you know, quiet Republicans. All right, the big story of the day, Matt Gates, uh, Representative Matt Gates, Republican Florida. I go back to Virginia. God, I'm taint. A uh, close ally of former President Trump is under investigation by this over an alleged sexual relationship he had with a 17 year old girl, according to the New York Times. Investigators are examining whether the congressman has violated federal sex trafficking laws by paying for the girl to travel with him. The sources said the probe was open, opened under a, federal, a former Attorney General, William Barr, in the final months of the Trump administration, and that senior DOJ officials in Washington were alerted to the existence of the investigation. First question, what did Trump know and when did he know it? And that split at the end between he and Barr, I'm curious as to whether this was part of that. Your take on all of this? You watched Tucker last night. Talk to us. Yeah, well, it was bizarre. C.S. Gates did his first on-camera interview since it erupted. And, uh, even uh, Tucker Carlson, skeptical about his claims, seemed visibly offended when uh, Gates brought up some uh, some dinner they he'd had with Tucker years ago. And went, <laughs> some <laughs> woman who was somehow involved in this was there. I mean, it was really... Bizarre. I mean, Gage's performance on this interview was incredibly confusing, uh, but he managed to completely alienate Tucker Carlson, who one would assume was poised to, you know, at least offer a sympathetic ear, if not defend him. So it was really, uh, I'd, I'd encourage anyone who has seen the clip to go out and find it. Uh, it's everywhere. And really a bizarre performance. Um, uh, the gist of it, uh, and I can barely recall it because it was so strange, but he's under investigation for, as you said, moving a 17-year-old girl uh, for the purposes of having sex. And he said that he was being blackmailed, that his very wealthy father was a liar on the FBI. And, and you know, it, it went on from there. It wasn't at all clear what he was talking <laughs> It's truly one of the strangest interviews I've ever seen. Well, I did see it um, later. At, but I have to say, one of the things that struck me as odd is, is that he, he brought Tucker's wife into it. Now, first of all, yes. that, that, so he was hinting at something there, Matt. If you, if you get into the head of a guy like this, Matt Gates, he, 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 to me it was, I'm going to take you all down because you've all been part of this crazy that we live. That's my take on it. Uh, and he was talking about pre uh, Tucker pre Fox. So I, I got, I got, I, I took that as, um, ugly and threatening in, in a way. Like you play with me, and, but it backfired on him. That's. Yeah, I saw it as like, you've been through this too. You crazy, you know, nothing else. Well, there was a Tucker Carlson story about 20 years ago. Yeah, I know it didn't really matter. No, thing. but it was um, out there, right? Yeah, I mean, I uh, it was bizarre. I mean, look, if this, <laughs> it, I, I assume the investment's still going on, and if it is um, going on TV and talking about wearing a wire, and <laughs> demanding people release tapes, and I guarantee you, his first call when he got wind that the story was going to break, because remember, he also floated that Newsmax story yesterday. I'm leaving Congress, so he knew this was coming. I mean, it's not like he hadn't spoken to anybody. Right. By the way, I also want to say it's plural with women, with girls. If you're, yeah. reading, it, it's not one. He's, That's true. The yeah. time story, and then he's hooked up with this guy who's like assassin, oh, a criminal county who, who was indicted and left his job. And, you know, was using like making fake IDs for teenage girls. Crazy, crazy, you know, crazy you know. stuff. But I think that he called Trump. Funds, <laughs> yeah, right. You know, yeah. Sounds crap. I mean, it was. Can I just tell heart. you that Florida is the most corrupt state in the union right now? It, it is. There's. It always has been. I, my dad used to tell me that as a kid. It, it's a. It's a totally corrupt state. But that being said, um, 
I think he called Trump because since going on Fox yesterday was a page out of Trump, except he didn't orchestra. He did. He did not deliver in the. He doesn't have the talent. To- no, he didn't have the talent. <laughs> No. Can you I mean, believe we're like, talking about this like this is so nuts? This is so nuts. I mean, it was so like if the, guy, you know, if, the cops, if the cops came to you to ask about your wife's disappearance and you suddenly started barking out, I haven't been in the basement in years. And the son, Nestor, that's, yeah, that's just... That's just another part of the story that just gets weirder by the day. I mean, this this, this guy, but but you know what? He has been a a, a, a bad boy all of his life until his father bought him. So it, yeah, it, it's not I, like, yeah, right. So that's just who he is. Could I just also say he's on the Judiciary Committee, and it seems to me while they're investigating such horrendous charges against him, he shouldn't be on the Judiciary Committee. So, just saying. Yeah, you know, just. Yeah. These are big charges, uh, so that uh, whatever. But but you know, as long as we're talking about him, and just let's play yin yang here. There is the Cuomo story that continues with another woman coming forward who has pictures of him. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, Matt gave her an Italian kiss on both cheeks, and she charged creepy. Yeah, I feel like the new standard is you made me uncomfortable. <laughs> That's exactly what the standard is, and now you know what you know. No. Yeah. Go Talk. ahead. No, you gentlemen no, first. I mean, I just uh, look. I don't know what happened, and some of the charges are serious. So I'm glad there's an investigation. There should be. If they're all proven, uh, you know, you know, grabbing and groping people, that's pretty bad. Um, and to go, but uh, but a lot of these things that you made me uncomfortable. Your arm on my waist while you're posing for a photo a little long. You know, <sighs> those those things may be inappropriate. You know, they don't rise to the level of overturning tens of voters or millions of voters. Yeah. The same people who are trying to gin that story up on the right are completely silent this morning on Gates. Silent. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I just thought I'd bring that up. I mean, from the sublime to the ridiculous, George Floyd, Derek Chauvin trial. I'm going to tell you, honestly, I can't watch it. I am. It, it tears my guts to shreds that's a terrible thing i know yeah. but i can't no no i mean you're not obliged to and, and uh, i totally get that i'm not watching you know i, I really if the first couple of days you believe the office is convicted um i think it's uh you know when you've got firefighters and other people who are horrified by saw that video uh, all <sighs> the witnesses uh, carried themselves dignity i mean it is not uh it is not going well for the defense so far no, um, since it, but you know what? You never convict cops, so I don't know what's going to happen. This is. I think this is different. I think you can never give cops a shooting because they, the juries are sympathetic to the idea that the cop thought was in danger and he was doing it was all in a second. This is nine minutes already. I, you know, you know, that's the thing. I was thinking about that because they, they, they extended the time. Now they're saying, is it closer to 10 minutes that he was, um, I can't imagine the hate and the anger that must be in somebody to maintain that position for that length of time over somebody. Yeah. Because that's sick. Truly, truly, truly sick. And all those people who were around there, nothing. I just, you know, we'll wait to see. But, you know, I wanted to bring up uh, because I, 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 it's such an important story, but it, I, it's too painful. It's, it's just too painful. Um, hey, guess what week this is? By the way, do you know how my day started today? Can I just sidebar for a minute? Yeah, sure. So I hear my dog barking, little matzo. Yeah. And I go outside. And standing or crawling between me and the dog is a coral snake. A coral snake. A coral snake is one of the most vicious snakes that kills in Florida. Yeah, it's not one of those little Florida. No, I will show you. I will send you a picture. I freaked oh, out. My. Oh, my God. I, I, and it was like... Uh, uh, 36 inches long, and I have, you know, the pool is right outside my bedroom window, a door, you know, my French door is open, and I step out, and there it is, and there is the dog, and, and between, oh my God. Have a nice day, Hallie. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that in. <laughs> so I, that's why I'm sounding a bit for a blunder <laughs> right now. I'm afraid to go outside again, because I don't know where then, right? Right, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know, and they do bite. All right, infrastructure week again. Two trillion proposal, Mr. Biden, uh, being called the American Jobs Plan. 
will focus on projects that could get bipartisan support like roads and bridges, expanded broadband internet access, electrical grid, and building modernization, and investments in clean energy like electric vehicle charging stations. Um, and also, by the way, includes an expansion of home health care services. So it's really going big and bold. What do you think? Does he have a Chinaman's chance without reconciliation? Uh, well, um, I think it's tough. I mean, he needs very shin, so he votes. Um, you know, tough, but there's some demand for it. I think Democrats want it. Um, you know, breaking it up into two bills is probably a good idea. Um, but it's tough to get tax hikes, and he does want to raise taxes to pay for a lot of it. And that's always tough, even if it's a popular operation. It's just tough to get through. So I, I don't know. I think it's fascinating because, first of all, that he is going so big and bold on everything he's doing so far. I love that. I don't know about you, but I love that. Um, but I think also, if you look at uh, polls, which, you know, but Republicans are on board with this. And I find, in fact, on everything he's done thus far, he's pulling in Republicans, even though they may be calling themselves Trumpians, MAGAs. They seem to want, I look at who wants to have their car drive over another hole in another road. And right. They, you know, there is that too. But uh, I, I was watching how they frame this. Uh, actually, Ron McDaniel actually this morning had the nerve to say, but there wasn't enough in the bill for COVID relief after they just fought. <laughs> so what planet are these? Re- you know, which is just fight. It doesn't matter what you say. Nobody's listening anyway. You know, just, just oppose. We're the op- op- opposition party. That We don't stand for a thing. We only stand against. I mean, seriously, I think they have a good chance of, um, for a, for a multitude. But, um, uh, well, you're right. It is popular. It's popular. And uh, it's a question of how quickly they get out and frame it. Because like you said, nobody wants tax hike. But if you can get a couple of the big guys in the corporations to go out there and say, I don't mind you know, you guys raising my taxes. And yeah, if you that doesn't hurt, that doesn't hurt. And if you can get some of the corporations, and it seems like uh, uh, if you listen to Wall Street, which went up with with his announcement of this, um, if you can get a couple of those dudes to say, no, you know, it was they they went too much far. The, uh, the the Trump administration, we can lower, you know, we lower it just a little bit. We don't have to take it back to where it was. We're happy. Right. Yeah. Right. So I, I, I think that's. Uh, that's uh, an important. Well, I hope you're right. I hope I'm right too, because um, I think it's a make or make break part of his uh, presidency. Yeah, I mean the country needs it. And um... how long are you going to put it off? You know, China's beating the crap out of us in every way, shape, or form. This is a chance to uh, get back some of the momentum. All right, I'm going to bring up Ron DeSantis here. Your governor, the anointed one. Yeah. Right. It's open for business. Well, he's anointed by the press, both Democratic press and Republican press. He's re- anointed as, as as Trump's, you know, replacement, if you will. COVID numbers are up again in Florida. Uh, he was, you know, getting away with, you know, look, we opened everything up and everything's fine. Well, not everything is fine because now there's a big piece in all the papers yesterday and today. 14,000 new cases of COVID were uncovered, deaths that right. were not reported. Um, and, uh, you know, you've heard me week after week. This guy is not playing straight. He's fudging the numbers on, you know, all sorts of parts of this uh, COVID thing. And so here he is. He's caught again. Uh, as cases are on the rise, why not after a crazy week last, you know, two weeks ago? And this week, by the way, with, with the kids down here, um, including hospitalizations and deaths. And now he comes out with, you know, because he's playing Trump all the way. No COVID passport. The passport. The government control you. When I went to school, you could not get into school without a piece, a yellow piece of paper that said you were vaccinated for smallpox and then polio and then tetanus. No, nothing new here. By the way, you're still required to have all of those. Yeah. And to prove it and still prove it. Right. So. Yes. What's the deal? I don't know. I just, I just, I, I just don't understand any of it. I don't. In the next half yeah. hour, we talk about um, <laughs> the cult of Trump. You'll listen when you listen to that, Matt. Yeah, you're going to understand a lot more. Uh, this was really eye-opening with um, uh, this unbelievable 
guy who had been part of the Moonies and went on to get out of the Moonies. And uh, so he knows cults. He knows cults, and he and Stephen uh, is Doctor Hassan. Steve Hassan wrote a great book, The Cult of Trump, um, and you know personal experience. So we'll be looking at that migrant story. Now getting a pass, I guess, right? Uh, for the moment, I'm sorry, which the mi- the migrant story because oh yeah, Matt Gates is throwing that off the front page. Yeah, it's a little off the page, but you know these pictures kind of pretty. These kids are being housed. Uh, I mean, it doesn't look that much better. Well, it doesn't look like cages though. They don't look like cages, but they're definitely in the bubble, sleeping on the floor. But better here than there. No, I agree. But you know, we, and that's we, why they're getting sent. Um, I'm just concerned about their handling of it, which you and I have talked about week after week. I don't, I don't see it getting all that much better. The only saving grace is that, you know, he appointed uh, the vice president to, to figure out what's going on, you know, in the Northern triangle and, and see if he can clean it up, but she can clean it up, but he's still a little tone deaf here. Yeah. A little off. Not sure the message is getting down to, uh, to goose and Guatemala city that you shouldn't come. And, uh, you know, it's a big test for Harris. And I really am impossible because, you know, we're not going to straighten can't, out no. those countries. And, yeah. I mean, it took, you know, years and years to get Colombians in shape. They need well, to get country. somebody, uh, they need to get a designer uh, in. Uh, maybe the people from um, HGT. Like Martha Stewart? Or like what kind of? T- to design new facilities to house these oh. people. Oh, yeah. So it doesn't know. So, well, literally build pods. Yeah. Uh HGTV, you listening? Get him in there. Um, right. Mike Pence is back laying the groundwork for, for 2024. That's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah, so you're still supporting him. <laughs> oh, God. Who are you going with, Pence or DeSantis <laughs> or Pompeo? <sighs> what a cast of characters this generation has given uh, us. I, yeah, I think you know. Pompeo, he's so strong. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And his wife. As first lady, oh my God! Yes, well, it's all great. Uh, Israel, no, it's a mess. <laughs> I don't know what the hell they're doing over there. Just, just yeah. So tell me, explain to me what's going on. Well, so I thought... they, they, they don't have nobody has enough to put a coalition together, and everybody doesn't really want to coalesce or with the other side. And so, so is this going to end up with the usual like? No, I you know, the only ends up. I don't know. I don't think so. I, I. I I think ultimately it's going to have to go to uh, back to a vote because I honestly, even though Ribbon, who's the president, who's you know just a figurehead, but he does have control to some. He's pushing you know the left to 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 make a deal and get Netanyahu out of there, which Netanyahu's team accused him of this morning, and that's a no no because he's supposed to be a just a figurehead and you know impartial. I I, I don't see I don't know how this ends. Um, I talked to a couple of my Israeli friends who still think it's going to wind up going back to. Um, Yet another vote. I don't know. Um, so you don't think Gantz, Blue and White Party, I, I, on top? I, I think right now it, it's all so fractured into such weird groups. That's the thing. And anything that would come together would last two seconds anyway. That's the other thing. Right. So, um, you know, I think the Israelis are really foolish. The one thing Netanyahu has done unbelievably well as compared to the rest of the world is he... <laughs> he stopped COVID in its tracks in that country, uh, and that that this goes for something. Um, I'm gonna because time again. Here we are, but anti Asian violence makes me crazy. Oh, that video! It's, what's wrong with people? Just just really, what's what wrong with people? Just what's wrong? At what planet? Um, uh, did we last week talk about the voter restriction in Georgia? I, I don't, think we did a little yeah, bit, okay. but, uh, but you can always go through it again. Well, I don't want to go through it again because it's nauseating to me. There, there was some good news on this this morning, though, because people are really up in arms about it. And, you know, they're finding a new way to fight this. If you can't win it in the legislature and you're not in the state and you're just totally ticked off about what's going on, it's boycott the corporations. And the corporations down there, Pepsi-Cola, Coca-Cola, you know, yada, yada, yada. Delta came under broad attack. And they then issued a statement, you know, a couple of days ago, and they were like, you know, manby pamby. Not this morning. Delta Airlines CEO called New Georgia voting restrictions unacceptable. Money talks. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think they're very smart. Uh, And so I would like to see that uh, um, happen with a lot, you know, like what's Coca-Cola going to do? 
Absolutely. It's a global corporation. You know, they were... um, they were a very moderating voice in civil rights at Cocoa because, you know, they had some time. Um, I used to live in Atlanta, so I a little bit about it. And, um, yeah, I think that's a very good pressure point. Well, my friends in Georgia you know, are... The irony what, is what's the irony? All these, all these votes have worked very well for Republicans, a lot of us already. It's really not at all clear that the moves are helpful for, for Republicans. Well, it's their only move, though, Matt, because they're losing um, statistically just because people of color are Democrats and there are more of them voting than there are white men. That I mean, it's yeah. like they don't have any other tool right now because they're not smart enough or they're bigoted enough that they don't want to to truly change the party and its platform. Right. I'm just saying that they. I don't think. I don't think these helpful Democrats bad for, as the kingdom has it. You don't think they're, it's as bad for Republicans? The open. Yeah, I don't think the open voting that the Republicans stop. Well, I don't know. I mean, for instance, in Florida with the felon. Okay, they're trying to after opening it up, they close it up again. Right. Well, the Republicans. Uh, but you know, most most felons are out there. We know how white men vote. I don't think there's any. A lot of those felons are, would have voted Trump. Um, you know, it's, I don't think it's as clear cut that how these go. I mean, the, uh, don't get me wrong, but I think it's also a very sharp part. Well, well, I totally agree, except to say that I also think it's the optic that they're more concerned about rather than the delivery of the bill. Like, look at us, we're fighting back against. Yeah, no, that is, that yeah. is just, it's performative. Well. Exactly. But That's the perfect word. I, I think, uh, I mean, not only. Yeah, well, um, I, I think that's exactly I mean, all it. these innovations came out of the West from Western governors where they're just, you know, they've been in for years. Mail-in voting, Dropbox. Anyway. They, well, they, they, they wind up being on the wrong side of the vote, of the voters. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, a, it's a negative, it's a negative I mean, move, not a positive move. Trump attacks them. Right, well, of course. and they, but, but they, they also. Yeah, but, you know, had they encouraged it, it would have made it much easier for old people to vote. Well, yeah, no, I, I get that. I get that. But I told you they're the opposition party. No, that is true. You are totally right. They, they're totally not. right. And they need to come up with some pro <laughs> helpful to the people, you know? Yeah, I know. It's all Dr. Z. <laughs> it's just so sad. Um, but this is who they are. The, the head of the chair, the chair of the GOP in Michigan called Governor Gretchen Whit- Whitmer a witch. This is, these, these guys are not okay. I mean, you know, at some point you have to say to yourself, and we're going long, but I, in my ear they're yelling at me, I'm too bad. Um, at, at some point you have, to, <laughs> you have to say, you know what? They're nuts. It's a, everything about them is sick. Yeah, that's what you have to say. All right, I'm moving on because I have a couple of things I want to still talk yeah. to you. Um, Lara Trump becomes a paid employee of Fox News. Shocking. But, but, but not so shocking. This needs to be looked at because it's with a couple of people now. They're paying her basically to raise money for her North Carolina Senate seat bid. Uh, Fox needs to be looked at about how they're spending money and on whom. Just saying. You know, this might go under something else. I hear you. Uh, campaign, campaign finance? I, I don't. Mm, I don't know. Um, here's a sad story, and here's a story that I do not get, and I want to bring this up. I don't care how long we're going. Alexei Navalny, the Russian, yeah, who was uh, you know running against uh, Putin, who got right poisoned and survived, and goes back to Russia because he's you know going to see it through, and they arrest him, and now he's in, in Siberia or some horrid place, right. and they're starving him to death and not giving him um, proper medical treatment, and he's very sick. He, he he went on hunger strike today. Yesterday, his father was held on a criminal charge. Here's what I don't get, Matt. Where's the outrage? This is in-your-face kind of stuff. At what point does the international community say, yeah, I went a bridge too far here? Human rights people are screaming about A, B, C, D, E, F. This is a real horrendous story. I, I agree. It's it's really awful. I'm glad Biden is that uh, more needs to be done. It's yeah. really terrible. Yeah, this is, I, I am mad at the American press for not making this a huge story. Just want to say. Um, yeah, I agree. They've gotten too used to, you know, Putin's a thug. Yeah, no, this is, this is, this is it terrible 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 thing that's happening it's incomplete it's absolute every law international law in the books is you know go to the un folks 
Is there a UN anymore? <laughs> <laughs> we'll save that for next week. Um, okay. Two other things. One is, should the press be covering Trump? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I'd say only when he says something important. Just spouting off? No. When does he ever say anything important? Um, yeah. No, he doesn't really. I wouldn't cover him for covering him. There's talk in the media on Twitter, you know, that um, he could likely be the candidate for 2024. And why are people treating him like he's a non-entity? Um, you know, it's really an interesting story. And here's it, where it leads me, as we say, ta-ta for the week. Biden's dog major is having a hard time adjusting to life in the White House. Uh, but so is the White House press corps, who couldn't think to ask POTUS in his first press conference about COVID-19. But Matt this morning reported on a pile of dog poop. Yeah, well, that press conference was not the best for the White House press corps. And I, I, I was a member of it for quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. Not the right questions to be asking. I mean, poop, you know, you got to re- <laughs> you got to you got to be asking. The- I, I I don't know why you have to be reporting the poop. But um, and this poor dog is a rescue dog. And, you know, I resent. But I got to say, they got a dog with a fight. At least, you he's know, it's biting a, back. He's a tough dog. I think that's good for Democrats, even if he's a little too tough. Dog and pony show comes I mean, to you mind. Know, the with a little gentle shih tzu. You know, <laughs> I <Pomeranian>. just. Pomeranian. <laughs> wrong with them you know we're, we're all for, for no, no, I we're all for for, for, for small wrong. challenged uh, I'm you know just, I'm, I'm just all saying for a for a democrat president dog with little two not, not one two. two yeah two. not the worst thing not the, not worst, the worst thing, thing. <laughs> not the worst thing but 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 uh, you know you got <laughs> i mean barney was he bit somebody too well that's true barney could be tough barney was um dog poop the state of our nation today march 31st 2021 nice to talk to you talk to you next week Talk to you soon. Is Donald Trump the head of a cult? The answer to that question is argued among family and friends, social media contacts, the media itself, and mental health professionals. In his eye-opening book, The Cult of Trump, cult and undue influence expert Stephen Hassan offers a brilliant analysis of a unique modern phenomenon as he expertly takes us through a fascinating, engaging exploration of the coercive control technique Donald Trump used daily as president and continues to deploy in his post-presidency. Dr. Hassan is uniquely qualified to speak on these subjects because at the age of 19, he became a member of a cult when he was recruited into the Moonies. He was one of the lucky ones. After two years, his family successfully deprogrammed him from the cult. As a result, he has spent the last 42 years working as a mental health counselor to help save others caught by the undue influence of a cult. Let's talk with Dr. Hassan. Well, welcome, Dr. Hassan. The cult of Trump is, in a word, a fascinating, two words, three words, a fascinating read. It's enlightening, and it is also quite disturbing. So I want to begin here. Um, I mentioned in your introduction that you uh, became a member of a cult, the Unification Church of uh, Sun Moon, Moon, the Moonies. My first question is about the people who fall prey to the life of that or a Donald Trump. What, what's, what is it? Is it, a, is it a character flaw? Talk to me. Sure. So I want to state categorically that people who get recruited deceptively into authoritarian cults, for the most part, are intelligent, educated people and are unfairly labeled as stupid, weak, um, and all kinds of other adjectives. And this is because of a very interesting phenomenon in social psychology known as the fundamental attribution bias, which means that whenever people try to understand other people's behavior, they tend to overestimate their disposition or their personality or who they are, and they underestimate the context and the social influences on them. In other words, when people ask me about the Moonies, they think, what was wrong with Steve that he got into the Moonies? And I was an extra honor student raised in a very secure, loving family. I had clear values and and goals. My situational vulnerability was my girlfriend dumped me. 
And I was approached by female recruiters who were flirting with me, who lied to me. But I didn't know anything about how cults operate. And I thought, like most people, that I was invulnerable to ever <laughs> to ever falling for a con artist or a scam or anything. I didn't know what cults were, really. Um, so the bottom line is, I think everyone needs to readjust their assessment. And of course, there can be people who are recruited into cults who have mental illness. But my experience is that authoritarian cults don't want members like that because they're hard to control mm. and they require a lot of time and attention. They want smart, capable people who can make lots of money, recruit others and do whatever they want, whatever political action that they want. That's what makes it so scary. Right. Right there. Yeah. That's it. Because yeah. it, it, it's the it's not what most people think it is. It's something much more insidious, uh, hard to point out, hard to figure at the time. I do know a few people who got caught up in Trump, more than a few, but some very close friends who got caught up in Trump. And I can tell you, there were two things that I saw in those people that were not things I didn't know about them, because I'd known them for years and years and years. One was an addictive personality who had been in addiction you know, problems all, all of her life. And another one who was always lonely, just throwing mm -hmm. that out there. Um, but I want to understand this from multiple ang angles, but we have to start with, you know what? People think they know what it means, a cult. What is a cult? Good question. So my way of thinking about the phenomenon is within a, a continuum of influence on one end, ethical influence and the other unethical and it's a continuum, not a binary. Um, and so there are lots of cults around. But what I'm worried about are authoritarian cults that use deceptive recruitment and control of people's behavior, controlling their information, controlling their thoughts and emotions to make a new identity that's dependent and obedient. So it's a very unique um, situation if someone's in an authoritarian cult and you can tell you're talking with someone in an authoritarian cult when they're not able to self-reflect and, and answer questions that anyone who is in a regular group could answer. For example, if you asked me when I was in the Moonies, oh, you've been in for two years, Steve, tell me three things you don't like about the Moonies. I wouldn't be able to answer, not a single point, because I because one of the rules is you, you don't speak negatively about the leader, the doctrine or the policy. I, I, I'm not I wasn't even allowed to have negative thoughts about the leader, right. the doctrine and the policy. Right. Yeah. But if you ask someone who goes to any group, tell me three things you don't like about your church or your pastor or your rabbi or whatever, they can generate it really fast. I can assure you if they're. If they're normal folks, right, right. right. Um, so what I'm concerned about is when people are not able to uh, have choice in their mind to exit. In other words, if you think of someone who has a phobia of an elevator, for example, someone who has a phobia can't imagine riding an elevator safely and comfortably. They can only imagine either plummeting to their death or being trapped for eternity in an elevator. And the minute they can start visualizing getting in and riding safely and getting out, and then they do it over and over and over again, then they don't have a phobia anymore. And they're free to choose to use the stairs or free to get in an elevator if they want to use it. And when you're in a, a destructive authoritarian cult, you don't have the freedom of mind to think about leaving without terrible fears, uh, phobias of retribution, of evil spirits, of the world coming to an end, whatever. And what helps people to get out of these groups is seeing others who were in it leave and be happy and fulfilled. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Standing in front of an elevator for a few days, watching people get go in and come out safely. <laughs> ad nauseum 
<laughs> it's ne- never yeah. having a problem. Uh, eventually, you learn, huh? This is not dangerous. I thought it was dangerous. My body and my brain was acting as if it was a grave danger to me, but there's no danger. It's mind games. Uh, a man like Donald Trump, who some saw as an intellectual, listen, I know this guy back from the day in New York City when we were all relatives. He's older than, a little older than me, but not much. But he was an intellectual lightweight. We all used to goof up about him. He was a pathetic playboy. Everybody used to carry on about that. He was unscrupulous, but he was amusing. I could go on and on and on. But tell us about the making of a cult, which Trump apparently has become. I mean, what is it in a person's upbringing, for instance, that primes them to become a cult leader? Sure. Good question. And I want to say that I grew up in Flushing, Queens, (laughs) 1.3 miles from Donald (laughs) Trump's house in Jamaica Estates. That's what you know, too. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and um, so when I when I was researching um, the book for Simon and Schuster, The Cult of Trump, uh, there was a lot I didn't know about him. And so, for example, I didn't know about how he um, was raised in the Church of Norman Vincent Peale, uh, which is uh, you know wishful thinking. You know, will it and God will d- deliver it which uh, is also now known as prosperity ministers and such, this kind of magical thinking and, and sin is doubting your, your wish fulfillment. Mm-hmm. So that was a piece of it. But his father was a truly bad actor, authoritarian, corporal punishment. He uh, reportedly told him and his brother, um, you are a killer, you are a king, you are a killer, you are a king, over and over and Mm. over again, and programmed him into thinking about people as either predators or prey. And so everything in his interactions were about either victimizing somebody or seeing how he can use them for his benefit, um, you know, or protecting them himself from being the prey to somebody else. Um... And he he has all of the stereotypical profiles of a cult leader, which is referred to as malignant narcissism. Um, it's all of the, the problems of narcissism, plus the thinking you're above the law and the pathological lying and the paranoia and the sadism. You're the king. threats and yeah. harassment. You're king. So I, I went through... I went through Trump with uh, my former cult leader, Moon, and Hubbard of Scientology and Jim Jones, and I gave citations of how they all had the same personality profile. And we think, you know, I'm speaking now as a mental health professional, that it comes from what's known as insecure attachment in the first couple of years of life. Where the where the infant wasn't given the safety and the security and the love that infants require the attention, the feeding when they're hungry and taking care of them so that he this whole life, his whole identity is a compensation for that where he he's never getting enough love. He's never getting enough attention. He looks for it outside. But in very negative ways. And and, and I'm, I have to say to you, what's interesting here is all of these things may have been there before. Mm hmm. But people didn't see it, didn't talk about it, or they weren't fully uh, manifested until such time as he got close to thinking about running for election, um, which he didn't think he was doing seriously in the first place. It it just seems, I think a lot of people were caught off guard. Maybe that's the point that I want to get to. But you're saying it was all there from the beginning, right? Oh, well, if you if you interview people who knew him growing up, of course, women he abused. But if you interview people who worked for him, they basically talked about him as being totally abusive. And it was a cult of personality. And you either did what he told you the way he wanted it or you were fired or you were humiliated and harassed. So there was always a cult of personality around him. Um, 
And uh, according to Craig Unger and uh, his book Compromat, uh, the Soviet Union was cultivating him for decades as a potential uh, agent. <laughs> Mind-boggling. You have a chapter in The Cult of Trump, America, a country wired for manipulation. That, that just broke my heart. Germany was wired for manipulation, too. How do we get here? Can we talk about this in those terms? What went wrong in this country? What's wrong in this well, country? Can you, can you, is, yeah. Yeah, this has been a, a, a an evolution or a devolution over decades of problems and issues. And uh, I would say that um, for me, going back in time to Edward Bernays and his 1928 book, Propaganda, that Goebbels used for, for Nazi Germany propaganda. Um, Bernays was the nephew of Freud, and he was the first to connect psychology with business and the first to connect it with politics and how to manipulate people and how to do propaganda in a way that was effective, whether it's selling you know, cars or making women believe they should smoke cigarettes which Bernays was hired by the tobacco industry to do. And what we've seen is a consistent evolution of sophistication, of, of understanding of how to manipulate people's minds. And we, it went from radio to TV, and, and then uh, digital age has been a boon and also a nightmare in terms of manipulation and control of human consciousness. Um, in my book, I talk about cults that have been around for many decades, like my former cult. Um, I learned after, after a, a congressional subcommittee investigation report that came out in 1978 that the CIA set up the Korean CIA, and the Korean CIA founder said that he used the Moonies group as a front to... Um, indoctrinate South Koreans um, to be good citizens to counter the North Korean brushing. And then the Moonies were brought over to the United States. And Moon still owns the Washington Times. Well, some young Moon is dead, but right. his heirs own the Washington Times. And little do we know, but uh, little that many people don't know, but Sean Moon, the son of Moon, brought a busload of Moonies to the Capitol on January 6th. And he and the Washington Times were, t were, were messaging that it was Antifa that <laughs> tried to do the coup. Uh, we're going to talk so, about that in a minute. So let me cut you off there because I have yeah. a lot of questions and I still sure. want and I want to get to as many as I can. I, I'm going to say this to you. Personally, I look at Trump and I listen to Trump and I think first he looks like a fat old man with a very bad hair weave job and not too much and way too much time in the makeup chair. And I listen to him and he sounds like a man with a strange sense of humor with an underlying bullying, uh, you know style to him. He's completely off-putting to me. You explain to me why he isn't to 50% or more of Americans? Oh, he's completely off-putting to me. <laughs> Thank goodness. Well, I know that. You wouldn't be here if that weren't true. I can promise you No, but you, 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 one, one has to, I mean, people have asked me, Steve, I looked at Sun Myung Moon. The guy had near zero charisma. How could you believe in him? Or someone who looked at Hubbard and his disgusting teeth. When he was alive. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and how can you believe he was source with a capital S and the greatest man in human history? So there are many examples of of cult leaders who have the most obvious flaws and problems. But in the mind of someone who's been indoctrinated to project all of these incredibly positive virtues and qualities on them, they're they're seeing him you know, through those lenses and their distortion lenses. I don't get it. Some of it, I just can't put, I can't wrap myself around some of it because some of it is so idiotic. And I see people, you watch people at those old, uh, watch the old footage, which I'm sure you did of his, you know, rallies and things that people find amusing or are laughing at um, or are entertained by or take seriously, you know, Americans, it, 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 it's mind boggling. Did you run across this? I've been told this a thousand times by people that he keeps a copy of Mein Kampf, Hitler's uh, whatever book uh, on uh, his nightstand and that he had read all of those pages of, you know, uh, Hitler's, um, you know, dealing with the press and how to manipulate the press. Uh, 
Did you run across that? So I remember that that Ivanka did say in, I think, her divorce proceedings or one of the interviews that there was a book of speeches by uh, Hitler, but I don't believe it was Mein Kampf itself. But, um, you know, it is so difficult. Have you ever seen anyone on stage being hypnotized? Oh, yeah. And they, you, you, maybe they were told that they were naked on stage when they were fully clothed, and they like act as if they're naked and they're covering themselves and and are acting really shy and embarrassed. But everyone can see they have clothes on. But, but that in gets in, yeah, of the, yeah. In the mind of the person, they think they're naked. Like their reality is not the same reality. And I think it's more useful to understand people who've been indoctrinated into authoritarian cult uh, as having been hypnotized and indoctrinated into a belief system that is self-sealing, so there's no reality test. And especially in this digital age where people have their smartphones and they're constantly getting messaged by the cult. It becomes a, a, a system of an, an influence and indoctrination that is very hard to step out of. People def- definitely exit the cult of Trump as they exit Scientology and the Moonies, but part of the keys of helping them is contact with non-believers that is positive, and, and, and especially with family members and friends that help remind them who they were before they got mind control. I must be an elitist <laughs> because I'm saying to myself, you can't manipulate me like that. <laughs> yeah, no, but, you, but, but it, you're not an elitist. You represent the majority of everybody because they think they're invulnerable, like it can happen to others, but not them. Well, that's it. And, and I think it's a point that one should bring up in the context of this conversation, because the same way you were talking about hierarchy within the system of the, the cult, it's mm-hmm. important to understand how that can happen too. Uh, uh, you know, it, you, I could get into a really negative trip on humanity right now. I won't go there. Um, but I will go here. I had to do, I did a piece uh, that took a lot of, uh, I had the Christian fundamentalist movement uh, in Virginia. And I got a just, oh my gosh, uh, eye-opening into what can go on in a system like that. This goes back to the when the mm-hmm. big movement uh, in the coming. And there's a language that they speak. Mm-hmm. There's a code that they speak. There is a clothing ethic that they, they do. There are things that you must do with, within the family system if you are to truly call yourself that. And, and I, I share that because that said to me, uh, I'll never forget this. I'm Jewish. Believe me, me. Christian is not a place that I spent a lot of my, you know, (laughs) formative years in. I'm Jewish too, (laughs) by the way. Yeah, so there you go, right? And here I am with all my Christian friends who were trying to turn me into Christian. And I, I got so, over the period of doing this piece, I got so into it. They all would say, I'll never get, boy, she really understands our language. She speaks our language. Are you, are you a Christian? Because they knew. They, they didn't understand that they were in there within their language or that they had gotten themselves within this cult. And that's the other part of it. If they don't know, <laughs> oh boy, what what are you dealing with there, Right. Um, no, exactly. No, I don't know anyone who's in a cult, an authoritarian cult, that thinks they're in an authoritarian cult. They think other cults are bad, but not theirs. That's they don't have a perspective. They have I, blind faith. That gets back to what I was saying earlier that how insidious this is. And then you have Rush Limbaugh back when he was alive, you know, or or, or the even these QAnon and the Proud Boys and the Libertarian, they they they're putting all this information out there, and people are taking it all in. And the next thing they know, it's January sixth, and they they're storming <laughs> the Capitol. Uh, right, but you understand that that Trump lied. He had lots of other politicians lie. Well, of course, and I want to talk about that. Other people. Yes, I'm glad you lie. That up. Yeah, and. And so it wasn't just, you know, in a vacuum. And um, there are principles of social psychology, like if an authority figure 
says something and you believe they're a, a legitimate authority figure, and a lot of people in the cult of Trump were Republicans before, a lot of them just believed in the authority of the president. Um, and so if he said that that he won by a landslide and he keeps repeating it over and over and over, and then he demonizes the other and, and says they're satanic pedophile trafficking people, etc., or the messaging is that, if Trump's not saying it overtly, um, people are in a dissonant state and they're either going to conform and accept it or they're going to exit it. And for a lot of people, if their key uh, uh, influence friends, trust pot or whatever, uh, are thinking that Trump is a great person and Biden is an evil communist socialist trafficker, then 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 uh, January 6th becomes uh, completely understandable that people are feeling like they've got to take their country back. Let me throw this out at you. So those are those are the we've, t- we've talked about the people who fall prey to it for their reasons. We talked about you know the different ways that can happen. What we didn't talk about, but I think we should talk about, is like majority leader or the minority now minority leader or Kevin McCarthy or or even any of these Republicans who've gone seditionists who've gone in with Trump. I find them the most dangerous of everybody because seemingly. Mm-hmm. Th- Look, I always, I, I think the whole cast of characters in Congress these days are nothing but carnival barkers in uh, Brooks Brothers suits. But that said, they get themselves elected. Uh, you know, they're Harvard and Yale and Princeton and yada yada yada, and that and and they've all fallen prey to them. Now I don't know, and you don't know, uh, you know, unless we sit down with them exactly why they they're doing it. But some of them cross the line. There's no question about. It. Um, mm-hmm. Does that worry you as much as that worries me? That worries me as as much as oh, any 100%. of it. Oh, hundred percent. No, of course it does. So one of the big you were asking me earlier, how do we get into this? I think Citizens United, United. decision, <laughs> you know, with dark money, um, is is an invitation to corruption and and by authoritarians who are wealthy who maybe want to promote global climate change as a hoax because they own a lot of fossil fuels or they're neo-Nazis or they're Russians who wa- want the Magnitsky Act revoked and and want to undermine America or they're, they're Christian dominionists who want to destroy the separation of church and state. <clears throat> so in my book, I talk, as you know, I talk about lots of different authoritarian cults that are in the cult of Trump and whose leaders are influencing the cult of Trump. And I, I'm hopeful that we'll find out just who's on the short list of Putin uh, and, and, and either bought off for Russia or Compromat, where the videotapes of them with underage girls or boys are, are being used as a tool to manipulate them. Um, but usually people become traitors to their own countries for... Money for sex, you know, self-serving for flattery, yeah, a feeling of importance. Um, so we'll find out eventually um, about some of these other bad actors, but there are many corrupt actors, and and we need we need to to re retool democracy for the 21st century and understand how our freedom is being used against us in the media in legislation, et cetera. Well, there is a problem now because we have this new media where everybody is, you know, uh, a reporter because they have a microphone, uh, which in, in and of itself leads to, you know, pushing the media into something it never was. I mean, I rail about the media on this show all the time, having been a long-term <laughs> member of the media because, there, you know, that White House press co- co- conversation the other day, you saw it with Biden. I mean, didn't even ask mm-hmm. about COVID. I mean, the, the stupidity is, is, is beyond um, imagination. My show, I can say that. Uh, I am, I'm concerned about all of these things that we've talked about. Um, I'm concerned that you can't, how you deal with these people, if we just get back to, to, to the uh, MAGAs, because you can't, mm-hmm. you can't call them deplorable. 
because that doesn't get you anywhere. Uh, well, it's what's our response? Exactly. So, what's our responsibility? We who think we're in the right and hopefully are uh, to to making headway here. So, I, I I honestly think that we we need more involvement, not less. And I think we need to get everybody out of a trauma state of mind, which we've been in for the last year, actually for the last five years with Donald Trump uh, as president, but especially since COVID and social isolation. So many people have suffered. So many people have had economic uh, deprivation. So many people have lost loved ones and friends. So we, we're going to need to rebuild a sense of community and and hope and connection with each other. But for me, I really believe that my work is kind of pivotal to helping people get out of this confusion of, you know, for example, we don't live in a post-truth world. Anyone who's saying you can create your own reality is living in a fictional (laughs) world of magical thinking. (laughs) And um, truth still matters. Journalistic standards of of fact-checking and sources and and a community that's an error detection and correction system is absolutely crucial. And lies need to be called out as lies. They're not, there's nothing called an alternative fact. Like that's bull. And I think that un- understanding the influence continuum, I have a model for evaluating authoritarian control that looks at four overlapping things behavior control. For example, information, thought, emotional control that makes people dependent and obedient. And when we're talking behavior control, it can be something as simple as you need to be loyal, which means you have to suspend your own conscience, your own critical thinking and do what you're told or else. And and if you're in any organization or country where that's the case, you're dealing with authoritarianism that's fundamentally opposed to democracy and human rights. I think, for so, example, yeah, I think something that's happened here um, because of the confluence of Trump and COVID uh, it, right now, I think. And, and then you have Biden standing up there with this decent guy, you know, who's trying desperately to somehow make all of this, you know, bad stuff go away and bring in the good stuff. There's a schizophrenia going on in this country right now. And I think it's in a way even scarier than it was when, when Trump was in off and tweeting a thousand times a day. Because I think people really don't know what to trust at this point, who to trust. And I, I even think that's true of, of Democrats at this point. They're, you know, it, everybody is raw meat interior-wise, I think. Um, can this country be saved? Are you hopeful? Absolutely. And I'm a lot more optimistic than you are, actually. (laughs) I think think we're in much better position um, in the last few months since Biden was inaugurated than we were before that. Just hearing Sidney Powell in her (laughs) response to the billion and a half dollar lawsuit or whatever by Dominion Systems say... Anyone who believes that I was serious when I said the election was fraudulent is not reasonable. I mean, <laughs> now that, seriously, that helps me as someone who wants to help people to wake up from the cult of Trump to get them to remember back to listening to her say how much evidence she had. And now she's being called to account and she's saying there is no evidence and you shouldn't take me seriously. But it isn't. But here's what makes me nervous. You don't get the proper response from the Trump side. So let me caution you, because I was in a cult. (laughs) You probably know better than I. A near fatal van crash and five days of 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 education and deprogramming before I could start to reevaluate. I do think people are going to wake up. But I think it's going to first start with folks like you and me understanding what we're dealing with, getting past our anger and our outrage, understanding how it was done to them, and understanding the methods, the strategic communication methods, which is essentially, you know, not magical, but it's really understanding and dialing into that person 
and helping that person understand authoritarian cult mind control in a way they'll receive it and they will exit themselves versus us trying to persuade them out or tell them they should listen to us and just switch their allegiances. And one, and they're, they're really deep down inside, people don't want to be exploited or abused or, or be thought of as suckers uh, for people who are, are, are bad people. And so, for example, I, I know many who've left the cult of Trump and a number of very brave, courageous, you know, people are whistleblowing and talking about what it's actually like to be when you are in that room uh, or in the in the White House, etc. And it more will come out, I promise you. And but we need to hold the bigger frame, which is understanding we have enemies of of our system, of our country from without including Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, just to name a few states. But also we have enemies within that are Christian dominionists or their former military intelligence officials who are soured on the government, um, or they're in new apostolic reformation cults that um, are so um, prevalent in the cult of Trump. And so we we need to become strategic as a as a society to put in place ways to help these folks to reality test. Here's what you're up and, against. Here's what you're up and, against. Let me just say yeah, what you're it's, it's you're up. No, no. Well, not simple. As long doable. as he can put on his tuxedo and walk into a wedding and get the media to pick up the story that he went and, and, and run the tape so that everybody is hearing his message, subtle, we're screwed. So at some point, it's going to be up to New York's Southern District to put this guy behind. Oh, he's going to be served, I, it sounds like, yeah, in the next and, few weeks with uh, the criminal, criminal stuff. But I agree with you that, you know, cult leaders and dictators, their fear is to be forgotten. They, they like it when people fear them. They want people to think of them. And so not covering Trump and, and marginalizing him, the media needs to get smart with that. And I, I scratch my head with major media <laughs> where, you know, CNN will show a picture of Trump full screen or three quarter screen. And then they have the critic and the tiny little box it should be the other way around. <laughs> Trump in a little box, you know, and or if at all. And we need to understand how the mind works and we need to be smart um, in terms of using the media in ways that will help uh, encourage people to be good citizens, which doesn't mean to bl blindly believe the authority figures. It means where we listen and we ask questions and we reality test. Listen to me. The bottom line on all of this is as long as money has crossed out of the newsroom or into the newsroom, which wasn't the way it was in back in my day, and the suits are in control, the media is in control. And Trump is, yes. and that's the, that's where you really have a problem because until you stop that, you really, really, really can't nip all of this in the bud. But we'll see what happens. I could no, talk to you for the next forty hours. You'll have to come back, <laughs> and we'll have to do this again. Two Jews talking Trump. I love it. <laughs> mm. Well, I would prefer to talk about how to rebuild America. Well, we can do that next time. I'm I'm all for it. I'm all for it because we need to do it. And I spend my days and my nights living, breathe. I thought when he got defeated, I would have some breathing space. Yeah, no, it's going to, I knew it was not going to be that simple yeah. after. Yeah. But I do, I, I'm, I'm telling you, Sidney Powell saying no reasonable <laughs> person would have believed me is great for us. <laughs> I mean. For waking people up. Uh, there's a book title on that on your next book. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been delightful. Thank you, Hallie. I really enjoyed talking to you, Steve. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I've been speaking with Dr. Stephen Hassan. His book is The Cult of Trump. This is fascinating reading. For more information on Dr. Hassan and where to purchase his book, visit his website at freedomofmind.com. 
Thank you for tuning in to The Helicaster Jane Show, a production of Resec LLC. The Helicaster Jane Show posts new podcasts Wednesdays, 3 p.m. Eastern, and is available at helicasterjane.com and on all your favorite apps. Be sure to visit us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and follow me on Twitter at The Halle CJ Show. Until next time, this is Helicaster Jane.